This is the Omega Diver 300M, the 75th anniversary limited edition version. We're gonna compare it to the regular one. And this Rolex Deep Sea, which is gonna be a stand-in for a Rolex Submariner, even though it's not a Rolex Submariner. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this limited edition Omega Dive Watch. This blue beauty comes in at $6,300 on the bracelet. I think it comes in at $5,900 on the rubber strap. Compared to the regular Seamaster, it's about $400 more expensive on the bracelet. This regular Seamaster has the aftermarket, well, it's not really aftermarket. It has the Omega stainless steel mesh bracelet, which is the same bracelet that comes on the limited edition Diver 300M bond watch that just came out which that one is like eighty five hundred dollars so there's a bit more of a premium on the 75th anniversary watch there are some differences though the regular one has an exhibition case back so you can see all the beautiful movement this one does not it's got a really cool design case i'll show it to you i'm not taking the bracelet apart though because this is not my watch a friend who is a bit of an omega head loaned this to me. He was kind enough to actually let me wear it. Luckily, we have similar wrist size and this watch has a quick adjustment on the clasp. So we're gonna talk about the 75th anniversary edition, but we're also gonna talk about why two Omega Diver 300Ms may be better than one Rolex Submariner. Let's talk about the specs. This comes with the Caliber 8800 in-house movement from Omega has a 55 hour power reserve. It's a certified master chronometer approved by Metas and it's resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss, which is actually important because I have another channel, the Cheap Audio Man, and I'm playing around with speakers all the time and sometimes individual drivers, which if you've never played with an individual driver like a really heavy duty woofer, it's got a bit of a magnet on there. So it's actually important for me to have watches that have some magnetic resistance. Crystal is a domed scratch resistant sapphire crystal with anti-reflective treatment on both sides. Water resistance, 300 meters. Has a case diameter of 42 millimeters. 20 millimeters between the lugs. 50 millimeter lug to lug. And the way the end link goes, it's a true 50 millimeter with the bracelet attached. And it is just slightly thicker than the regular Diver 300M because of the case back, I believe. The limited edition one's a little bit thicker. Let's talk about the dial. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. We're just getting this channel off the ground. And I know like 70% of people watching aren't subscribed. It would mean the world to me if you subscribed and liked this video. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, the dial. So the whole point of the 75th anniversary line series of Omega watches is basically have them get bluer, deeper, darker blue the further they go down in depth rating. The 300M Professional kind of lands right in the middle. So it's a full real 300 meter dive watch. So the Aquaterra is a lighter color blue. And then when you get all the way down to like the Planet Ocean, it's a deeper blue. So darker around the periphery, a little bit lighter in the middle. But this is still a pretty dark blue watch, especially around the periphery of the dial. In the middle, it's a little bit lighter and it's a lot lighter around the Omega logo and all the text and it's kind of difficult to read it unless you get the light just right. There's a date window at the six o'clock position, but there's no beveling. There's no border around it or frame. It's just down there. They have double batons at the 12 o'clock, batons at the three and the nine, circles at the fives and a little tiny rectangle down at the six o'clock position. The handset is skeletonized, exactly like the regular Diver 300M Professional. And then the seconds hand is kind of like a lollipop with an antenna on the top. And it goes all the way out to the minute track around the periphery of the dial. No chapter ring or rehoit, it's just straight down. And the seconds hand on the black regular one is red tipped where the seconds hand tip 
on the 75th anniversary edition is just silver. The loom on the special edition is kind of a light blue. Still works really well. And then the bezel has Arabics at the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, triangle at the 12 o'clock, long batons at the fives, individual minute marks all the way around. And the paint inside the Arabics is again, that light blue, very much matches the applied indices. Applied indices are spectacular. One of the things I love most about the Omega Seamaster 300M Professional is how far off the dial the applied indices raise up. Very classy. This dial in the right light almost looks metallic, like it has a metallic finish, which I, really like. It looks really good just under regular lighting, but you get it outside and it's just spectacular. Very interesting, but also not, this is going to be an Omega lover's watch. It's not going to be something that is trying to take on like a Submariner blow for blow. This, although usable for diving, doesn't really have the super ultra contrast that someone would probably want if they're actually diving and using it as a tool watch. However, it has the same functionality as the regular Diver 300M Professional. Let's talk about the case. Case, if you watched my review of the regular Diver 300M Professional, I'm getting sick of saying that, okay? I'm just gonna say, if you watched my other review, you know that the case finishing is really excellent. It is brushed on the side Highly polished on the turn down portion of the lug right here. Really curvy lines on the crown side. Crown guards come right off of the case. Very smooth transition, highly polished at the tips of the crown guards. Then the crown itself is of course signed with the Omega logo and it's highly polished as well. This watch wears a lot skinnier on wrist, so if you wear it a little bit loose, it kind of rocks back and forth. And what you're really seeing is just kind of this side right here. So in my opinion, living with the Diver 300M for a long time, it wears very skinny, svelte, more svelte than a lot of watches do. Ever so slight turn down in the lugs, but it wears really well on my wrist. This is like a perfect size for me, for my wrist. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. But even smaller wrists are gonna be able to get away with the Diver 300M Professional because of the lug to lug. It's still 50, but it's still very wearable. Let's talk about the bracelet. Ooh, the bracelet. I think this is gonna be pretty divisive. I will start with this though. The Omega logo on the clasp down here is spectacular. I mean, it really pops. As soon as you turn your wrist like this, it's just like Omega right in your face. And the finishing on this thing is spectacular. The brushing is really awesome. So if you're thinking about getting an Omega, even if it's the regular one, get it on the bracelet. Even though the bracelet is a little bit dated looking in certain aspects, the finishing and the quality of it is really top notch. I got mine on a rubber strap and I totally regret not getting the bracelet. That's why I was really excited that my buddy got the braceleted version because I'd never actually played around with it in person. And even though it looks a little bit dated, you can't really appreciate this thing until it's on your wrist because it is a five link. So every link is basically five pieces. And it wears to the point where certain pieces are actually kind of depressed on your wrist, which gives it more, I don't know, visual appeal and more depth. It's really a statement. The finishing is really excellent on every piece here. You can tell that each piece has been individually finished. And it does have a quick adjust too. You just push a little button and it comes out. I will say though that when you do extend it all the way, it does kind of look eh right here, like this part right here, just doesn't really match the rest of the bracelets kind of, I don't know, vibe. Just doesn't look nearly as good. But if it's a hot day, you wanna adjust it a little bit, you can basically adjust it a full link size. This also comes with tiny little, I wouldn't even call them half links, I would call them like quarter links. So if you really wanna get a fine tuned adjustment, you can, but with the quick adjust, I don't think you really need to. Very nice. I was really impressed with the bracelet. The only reason you shouldn't get this on the bracelet is if you just absolutely hate the design, but I would give it a chance because there isn't that big of a premium to get the bracelet. 
I ended up getting the mesh strap. So now I have the rubber strap, the mesh strap. Now I've had experience with the regular bracelet. I love the mesh and I love the regular bracelet. The rubber strap just seems like it comes straight down from the watch and then kind of hugs your wrist at the side. So if I had to do it all over again, I would get my original on the original bracelet. Let's talk about the bezel. Bezel on this has kind of a slight color deviation from the dial, but it's all done in a complementary way where it ties itself together. The paint in the actual Arabics is recessed. Bezel action is very good. It's 120 click, no bounce, no back play. But what I will say is after having an Omega for over a year, bezel action is starting to get a little bit loosey goosey. In five years, I think I'm gonna have to be going to Omega to try to get them to replace springs or do something else because I just don't think the bezel is going to hold up having owned one for a while. It does get looser over time and it's already almost slightly a bit loose to begin with. It's got a scalloped design around the edge of the bezel and it's very easy to get a hold of, very easy to turn, maybe a little bit too easy. Compared to something like a Rolex bezel, Rolex is a lot easier to get a hold of. The Rolex bezel action is a lot smoother, more damped, more confidence inspiring. I would say the bezel action is probably the weakest point of any of these Omega Diver 300Ms that I have had my hands on. So let's talk about whether or not I think this watch is worth it and why I think it's better than a Rolex Submariner. All right, well, you gotta put Rolex in the name of your title to get people to watch. So one of the reasons why I think these watches are better than the Rolex Submariner is because you can basically get two of them for the price of a Rolex Submariner. Rolex Sub Date comes in around 10,280, and that's in an AD. However, you're probably not gonna get one if you want one right away. So street price, I think, for that watch is around 12 to 13 for a new one. If you get the regular Seamaster on a rubber strap, you can actually get that from Joma Shop, brand new. It's a gray market one, but for 4,400 bucks, 4,450. This one you'll probably have to order or go into a boutique and it is $6,300. Then you can get the official Omega mesh bracelet for $800. And at that point, you would have two different watches, one limited edition watch on the regular bracelet, one of the OG black ones on a rubber strap and on the mesh strap. So you can kind of change these straps around because if you put the mesh strap on this one, then you have a bit of a Bond vibe on this watch. So you can basically get two Diver 300M Professionals for the price of one Submariner and three different strap options. Availability is also another reason why you wanna consider Omega, except for the limited edition, probably can't go in and just buy that one. Originality, you're not gonna get a limited edition Rolex Submariner because they pretty much only make it in the designs that they make it in. That's really cool in one aspect, but on the flip side of that coin, you don't have as much fun with the Rolex subs. It's kind of, I wouldn't say pedestrian, but it is so traditional that you're not gonna be able to express yourself emotionally through your watch with a little bit of different colors because this one's a little bit funner, I think. Because I own this JC, James Cameron Deep Sea version, I don't think I'll ever be getting a sub, simply because, I mean, it's kind of redundant. This is kind of like a beefy, more aggressive Submariner. And the Black Seamaster kind of scratches that itch. So I think it's awesome that they did this 75th anniversary limited edition. I know they kind of do a lot of limited editions, but it's also kind of cool because you have something that's a bit more original than a black Submariner. And it comes in just north of half the price of a regular Submariner. I don't necessarily see this version as basically your only watch, kind of like a black sub date or no date. But if you are kind of an Omega super fan, then I could definitely see this kind of being in the collection right next to another Omega. And if anything, that might be the genius of Omega 
with these different versions is because if you are a fan, if you do own one of them, and then another special edition, limited edition version comes out, then you're probably more likely to go ahead and buy that one too, because even if you have two or three of them, from a value logical standpoint, you're still coming in around the same price, maybe not three, but you're still coming in around the same price as a Rolex Submariner. Besides the bezel action, the other complaint I have about this watch, because I have owned it for a while, is the date down there. It just kind of seems like it, I don't know. It just seems like it wasn't thought out. This is a color match date wheel too, by the way. It just seems like they cut out a hole in the dial and then they're like, okay, there's the date. Wish it was beveled down or something like that. Very cool watch. Very, very, very cool watch. And if you get a chance to pick one up and you're a fan of Omega, I would suggest you do it. I don't know how many of these they're gonna make, but having this on the wrist, taking it out in the sun, it's really something else. This is a pretty blingy watch when you're wearing it around outside, especially on this included bracelet. This does have a bit of a look at me vibe. So you can support the channel by giving me a super chat, buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video, put a little money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can also just subscribe. We're trying to get this channel off the ground. I think we have around 12,500 subscribers, which is pretty awesome. I also have a Patreon. If you want to, you can go support me over there. And you can also check out my other channel, The Cheap Audio Man. It'll be linked in the description. Hi-Fi, home theater, headphones, a lot bigger channel than this one. So don't worry about spending a whole bunch of money on watches. A little bit disingenuous considering I'm talking about a $6,300 watch. Buy what you can afford. Like maybe this limited edition Seiko for around, I don't know, 350 bucks, I think. I got this. You can watch that video right over here or over here. Anyway, buy what you can afford and enjoy every minute of it. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Watchman.